Welcome to Go Get It. This video session is completely based on LR parser. We'll see the LR parsing table construction and the diagrammatic representation of LR parser. Before we proceed further, I would recommend to go through the video which is based on the first follow calculation and the bottom up parser video. Now let's move into the LR parser diagrammatic representation. So this complete uh, picture you can see here, we have the stack. This is the stack which will uh, consider the input symbols. This is the input incoming uh, string which will go into the stack and the, from this stack the LR parsing program whichever uh, uh, is created by the uh, compiler design and designer. So this will this LR, LR parsing program program will consult the stack and it will consider the incoming string and on the basis of incoming string it will consult the LR parsing table which is very important part of LR parser and based on the uh, entries made in the LR parsing table the LR parsing program will generate the parse tree or if any error occurs it will generate the error. So this is how LR parser program works. Now let's get into the LR parsing table construction. There are three important points to be noted here are augmented grammar and the canonical collection and the construction of LR parsing table. So augmented grammar to identify the accept action will use the production s dash gives s. So this s dash or s this symbol denotes the starting symbol of the grammar. So that this addition of this production to the existing grammar is called as augmented grammar. Now the next and the very important part of uh, construction is the canonical collection item calculation. This canonical collection of LR0 items, mind well that we are considering here the LR0 parser. I will shortly uh, tell you about the 0, what is 0 in LR0 parser. So the canonical collection has three st uh, stages. A gives dot, this dot plays a very important role. X, Y, Z can be anything like terminal, non-terminal, anything. So that dot signifies that the parser is ready to scan the input string. This position of dot shows that the parser has scanned element X and ready to scan Y, Z. And at the last it shows that the parser is ready to detect the handle. That means it is in the reduce, operation, uh, reduce action. And finally with the help of these uh, uh, items will generate the DFA that is the uh, finite automated states and will construct the LR parsing table on the basis of that DFA. Now let's directly jump into the problem solving situations. So we'll uh, consider one grammar here. So the grammar we have here is A, B, A gives A, and B gives B. So this is the given grammar. We need to determine whether we have to construct the LR0 uh, parsing LR0 parsing table and we have to tell whether it is a LR0 parser or not. So uh, according to the first, we need to create the augmented grammar first. So we'll create So this is the augmented grammar generator. Now the next step is to call the closure function to put the place marker. That means the dot marker whatever we have considered this is called as this dot marker we need to place. Now uh, mind well here that just make a note how are we placing the dot marker. So first is dot s. Now, you have put dot before s so we'll consider the s including grammar so we'll consider this grammar here s gives dot a b now this dot is appearing before a so we'll consider a here and we'll put the dot here so this will make your the first very first state of the dfa so we'll call it as i0 so do note that we are not considering B, uh, this production of the grammar into I0 because this place marker 
is placed before a not before b if we would have a uh, production say s dot b then we would have considered b arrow b so this is i0 now from this we need to make the shift or reduce actions whichever is possible so on the basis of s we'll get s dash s0 so this is i1 so you can note here that dot is shifted i mean this is a shift action happened so it has placed here here that's that's it we can do on s only one operation here one shift operation now next shift operation will happen here on a so we'll get s a dot b now as i said in the very first initial step that we are placing dot here before b so we'll consider b here with putting b so this will make your i2 and finally we'll get on small a this will give you a dot this will be called as i3 now this is the final we cannot move further as the dot has reached the last uh, symbol of the production now next we'll get here i2 so from i2 on the symbol b will again make a shift operation which will give you s a b dot so this will call as i4 and from here on small b will get b b dot this is again i4 i5 so that's it we are done here so uh, this here you can notice that i3 i5 and i4 these are the reduce actions and i1 is a reduce action on start symbol that is the accept action so this is the accept action so we'll construct the parsing table here now to construct the parsing table we we need to have this uh, complete uh, grammar in consideration so uh, we'll generate the parsing table here somewhere uh, as we need the reference of these diagrams so we'll create the parsing table here we have i0 i1 i2 i3 or uh, we'll move to next page so will the i will draw the diagram here as i0 i1 i2 i3 i4 and i5 and here we'll put the shift and reduce um sorry so we have symbols here terminal a b and dollar we have s terminals a uh, non terminals here and b so from i0 i'll draw the diagram we'll consider the uh, uh, so from i0 you can see that on capital uh, a or small a we are moving to i3 so we had first symbol here sorry we had first symbol as a here so on small a from i0 we are moving to i3 and this is a shift action happening so we'll put here s3 3 is nothing but the state number and s denotes the shift operation and on i1 and on dollar you can see here that i1 on dollar this is the uh, accepted operation so we'll put i1 on dollar as accept then next comes uh, i2 so from i2 we are doing a shift operation on small b that is i5 so it will be s5 on i2 s5 so these were the shift actions happened s3 s5 and you can see that 
I3 is a reduce operation happening. That means reduce means we are ready to detect the handle here. Similarly is the case with here also I4 and I5. So here we can see uh, now uh, we have to serialize the grammar, given grammar. Serialization is nothing but whatever grammar we are having here will give a number to them. S, A, B as first. Second being A dot, uh, I mean this one and third being so we'll put the uh, reduce actions based on these numbers one two three so a hyphen uh, i mean a gives a this is the reduce action happening and this is this belongs to number two so we'll give here on i3 we'll give the num reduce action as r2 to all the symbols so this happens in lr0 grammar similarly with i4 you can see s a b1 so this is the grammar which is reducing here with i4 so we'll give r1 here for i4 and finally we'll give here r3 so these were the reduce actions happened on all the uh, point, um, we we don't have such right now uh, like which reduce action um, on which symbol we are going to because there is no look ahead uh, concept here in lr0 grammar and in go to action, we'll put here 1, here 2, and on i2, it's 4. So you must be wondering why this 1, 2, and 4. So on i0, i0 on s, it is moving to i1. So these are the non terminals considered. Now s, a, b. So on s, it is moving to i1. So we have given this one number here on s. i0 is, has moved to state 1 on s. Similarly, i0 has moved to state 2 on a and i2 has moved to state 4 on b so this is how we will uh, enter the uh, go to entries here so these are called nothing but go to entries and these are the sr entries now uh, this grammar can be called as lr0 grammar why because there are no multiple entries found or there is no shift reduce conflict or reduce reduce conflict so that's how uh, if we would have got uh, some shift or uh, reduce operation on the same column same row then we'll call it as sr conflict and rr conflict so that's how we need to determine the sr conflict and rr conflict in the given or the generated parsing table and we'll determine whether it is lr0 grammar or not I hope this is clear to you. If you have any kind of question, just mail me on demand at goldgateiit.com. We'll consider one more uh, problem here, very short problem, where we'll see the conflict occurring. So you'll get the concept very clearly that what do you mean by conflict. So we'll consider one more grammar here. We have E, T plus E, E gives T and T gives I. So if you uh, if you have watched the video which is based on the bottom up parser, we have considered this grammar and we have said that this is the SR conflict grammar. It, it it gives you the SR conflict grammar. Now let us see how it gives the SR conflict grammar. We'll directly jump into the construction of the DFA. This is the augmented grammar we are generating. We'll consider T as place marker is before T. With put the place now this is i0 on e it will give you e dash e dot this will be i1 on t it gives you t plus e and uh, are we missing anything? Oh, we missed one more grammar here. And we'll get here. T dot. This is I2. And on I will get I dot. So uh, you can notice here that I1 and uh, your uh, this is 
i3 i1 and i3 i3 looks fine no issues with that but in i2 you can notice that there is a shift happening uh, will shift happen will happen on plus and there is a reduce action also so this kind of situations are called as sr conflict that means shift and reduce operations are happening simultaneously and that will reduce to conflict operation because compiler won't be knowing which operation needs to perform so uh, you can notice if you move on plus and you will do a reduce action also so that kind of conflict occurs and this is called as sr conflict and hence we can directly say that this grammar is not lr0 grammar so there are certain points to be noted here that um, first point will note is if any grammar which is in the form of a alpha dot a beta so this a is nothing but a terminal this kind of states and with one more production say a gamma dot so this kind of states if appear in your uh, dfa construction it shows sr conflict second point to be noted here is if you have any grammar a alpha dot b gamma dot so if this kind of uh, states appear in your construction then this is called as reduce reduce conflict so if any of these states are found in your grammar then we can directly say that this grammar is not lr0 grammar and some and these states these kind of states are also called as inadequate states so uh, i hope you are clear with the sr conflict and reduce reduce conflict operations and one more thing to be noted here we are uh, consistently calling lr0 so you must be wondering what is this zero zero is nothing but we are not considering any look ahead symbol or look ahead concept to uh, i mean uh, it indicate zero indicates no look ahead concept is followed to place the reduce entry so when you construct the um, parsing table so we are placing it on all those uh, t terminal symbols so what is happening uh, there is no look ahead symbol as zero is there so there is no look ahead symbol is used to place the reduce entries in the sr uh, parsing table uh, lr parsing table so to avoid such drawback will construct the very next grammar is slr parser or it is also called as slr1 parser s means simple lr1 parser where one denotes will generate will consider one look ahead symbol while placing the reduce entries i hope this uh, video uh, on lr0 uh, uh, parsing table construction is very much clear to you if you have any kind of questions do mail me at demand@gogateit.com thanks for listening have a great day